Meowda y'all and welcome back to another video. An interesting concept in farming sims like Stardew Valley is the change in the calendar system, having four seasons but each one lasting 28 days, then progressing to the next season. And we do a lot of theorizing about the characters in Stardew Valley so this left me wondering. What astrology signs would the characters in Stardew Valley be? That's what we'll be discussing today, so buckle up. If you don't know me, I'm Sada. I make Stardew Valley YouTube videos featuring game challenges, lore, and theory crafting and analyses. So if you've got any feedback or suggestions for the next video, feel free to leave a comment down below and hit that subscribe button for more. First things first, I'll do a brief explanation of each astrology sign and the typical traits that someone belonging to that sign might have. I understand that your star chart can reveal that your sun could be a Taurus, your moon could be Pisces, but we're going to keep it super simple and just discuss which sign we think fits a character the most. Because each season in Stardew Valley is 28 days, that means if a character's birthday is in spring in Stardew Valley, then there are four possible signs for them, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, and Gemini. There's some overlap with Pisces since it covers some winter days and Gemini since it covers some summer days, but that's okay. Feel free to let me know if y'all agree or disagree with my theories in the comments. I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts. Okay, let's get started. I think we should start with the spring birthdays and go in order starting with Kent, whose birthday is spring four. Is Kent a Pisces, Aries, Taurus, or Gemini? Pisces are characterized by their deep empathy and creative spirit. They're typically compassionate and intuitive with a rich imagination that fuels their artistic inclinations. They have a profound understanding of others' emotions and are often seen as nurturing and caring. On the downside, their tendency toward idealism and escapism can lead them to avoid reality and struggle with the decisiveness. Their sensitivity might also make them prone to feeling overwhelmed. Aries embodies a dynamic and pioneering energy. They're known for their courage and enthusiasm, often taking the lead and in diving into new ventures with confidence. They are action-oriented and driven by a desire to achieve. However, their impulsiveness and impatience can sometimes result in reckless decisions, and their confrontational nature may lead to conflicts with others. Tauruses are associated with practicality and stability. They're reliable and enjoy life's comforts, valuing security and perseverance. They are often seen as grounded and determined with a strong appreciation for the finer things in life. Yet, their stubbornness and possessiveness can create challenges as they may resist change and become overly attached to their routines and possessions. Geminis are known for their versatility and communicative abilities. They are typically curious and adaptable, enjoying mental stimulation and social interaction. They have a knack for connecting with others and navigating various situations with ease. However, their tendency to be fickle and inconsistent can lead to issues with focus and reliability. Ability. Their restless nature might also cause them to avoid commitment. Okay, so I definitely don't think Kent could be a Pisces or a Gemini. I don't think he really ever shows us a creative or artistic spirit like a typical Pisces or shows a lack of commitment or an enjoyment of social interaction like Geminis. I'm torn between Taurus and Aries, but overall I think I'm going to say that Kent is a Taurus. Kent is a soldier and I don't think I need to explain how he is a determined individual. His resistance to change, which is typical of Tauruses, is proven in some regular dialogues he can say to us. I don't know if I'll ever get used to being back home. The peacefulness of the town feels like a mask. That's probably just me though. I don't know what to do with myself now that I'm back. I'm used to having more structure in my day. Kent finds it very difficult to adapt to the new change of being back in Pelican Town, and with his strong, forward way of thinking, I think Kent is our first Taurus. Next up is Mayor Lewis, whose birthday is Spring 7. I don't know about y'all, but when I was doing research on all of the astrology signs and reading the descriptions for them, and I saw that a typical trait for Geminis was fickleness and inconsistency, I immediately thought of Lewis. We know that there's a secret relationship between him and Marnie and unfortunately he just doesn't give her the time of day as much as she wants. He acts like he wants to spend time with her but if we search his room we find a letter from Marnie stating, won't you come by tomorrow night? If you come through the back window no one will notice. I'd like to see you more often. I know you're busy but can't you make time for me? I hope to see you tomorrow. Signed M. Why does Marnie have to beg this guy to come see her and visit her? Reach Six Hearts with Lewis and Marnie, and between 7pm and 11pm, you'll find them chatting by the river about making their romance public. Lewis states that it would undermine his authority, while Marnie states that he cares too much for his job. A Gemini's restless nature might also cause them to avoid commitment. Yeah, I'm leaving Lewis as our first Gemini. Next up is Vincent, whose birthday is Spring 10. I'm unsure about analyzing the personality of the kids too much, since they have so much more time to grow and change, and the amount of dialogues and cutscenes they have is really limited. 
limited. It also feels weird to call a kid that's very excitable impulsive or reckless because that's just a kid being a kid. However, I'll go ahead and say that Vincent is probably a Gemini because of his curiosity that is typical of a Gemini. Penny's report card for him that can be found in the living room of his house has some insight as well. Report card. Name, Vincent. Reading, C. Spelling, D. Math, C. Social studies, B minus. Art, B minus. Sports, A. Note, Vince is a good boy, but he could make do with a little more studying. Signed, Penny. So I don't think he's some overachiever or studious kid or anything like that. So I don't think he could be an Aries. And I also don't really see him being stubborn or headstrong or anything like that. But who knows, give it a few years and maybe his personality will take on more of Kent's traits than Jody's. Next up is Haley, our first bachelorette, whose birthday is spring 14. And I've got to say, I think she's an Aries. They're known for trying new things and their confrontational nature may lead to conflicts with others. When we first meet Haley, she states, if it weren't for those horrendous clothes, you actually might be cute. Mm, actually, never mind. If that's not confrontational, I don't know what is. But she's also willing to try new things. Reach a hearts with her and you can find her taking photos at Marnie's ranch, and she decides to approach a cow for the first time ever in her entire life and climbs on one. The cow bucks her off and she falls into the dirt, but she completely laughs it off and sends a letter to us the next day. Farmer. I thought it would be fun to write you a note. I had so much fun with the cows yesterday. I'm starting to understand why you chose the farmer's life. Hope to see you soon. Signed, Haley. This is definitely someone with a lot of courage that's willing to try a new and somewhat scary experience. Now, upon writing this script, I started to think that maybe Haley was more so a Gemini because of how they're curious and adaptable. But Geminis are also really good at connecting with others. And I'm sorry, but Haley is not good at that. She bickers and argues with Emily, her sister, a lot. And sometimes when we talk to her on a random day, it'll state that she's ignoring us. This isn't because we gave her a dislike or hated gift or anything like that. It's just a random thing that can happen. Geminis are known for their communicative abilities and Haley doesn't seem like she can communicate very well, choosing to scoff and ignore people sometimes. Haley's going to say an Aries, in my opinion. Next up is Pam, whose birthday is spring 18. Definitely a Taurus, in my opinion. She enjoys life's comforts, like a cold beer after a long day of staring at a broken down bus. Her possessiveness, as seen in some of her dialogues, is also pretty blatant. Hey. Penny's my baby girl. Be nice to her or leave her alone. Got it? If you marry Penny, she can also say, hey, you better be treating Penny right on that old farm of yours. She's the only one I got. Penny's the only one I've got, so you best treat her kindly. Now, let me clarify, I don't actually think Pam is weirdly possessive of Penny. She's protective of her and obviously doesn't want some random farmer that just moved in to take her away forever. But all of this still leads me to believe that she prefers stability in her life and she wants her creature comforts and her safe spaces to be untouched and not taken away from her. Next up is Shane, whose birthday is spring 20, and I think we've got another Taurus on our hands. He's not really a big dreamer. He enjoys the creature comforts of a cold beer and a hot pizza at the end of the workday. His stubbornness is seen when we first move into Pelican Town and try to befriend him. I don't know you. Why are you talking to me? What? What do you want? Go away. Don't you have work to do? Why are you bothering me? I want to be alone. You again. How many times do I have to tell you to leave me alone? Shane isn't used to random strangers displaying an almost overwhelming sense of neighborliness, and we can see that he's resisting change. Notice how when you shut down Joja Mart by completing the community center instead, he still wears his Joja Mart jacket despite hating the job and the company and not working there anymore. He could throw it away, but it's comfortable and he's used to it, so he continues wearing it, further showing his Taurus ways. Now let's not just focus on the negative traits, Shane is reliable. Despite all of the issues he has on his plate, he shows up to work on time each and every single shift. And when we marry Shane, he is putting in work at home, just like every other spouse. Winter's just around the corner. We need to double check the heating system, turn off the valves, and check all the insulation in the house. Don't worry, I'll take care of it all. I'll be helping Marnie with the animals at tomorrow's fair, like usual. You should just kick back and have some fun. Shane is definitely a Taurus. Next up is Pierre, whose birthday is spring 26, and I definitely think he's an Aries. He used to be a boxer and decided to open up a shop in the small town of Pelican Town. That's definitely a new challenge that he was confident enough to do. He's very much driven to achieve success and work towards his dream. My dream is to keep opening new stores until I become extremely wealthy. Hi there, is your farm still doing well? Maybe a few of my seeds will spruce things up. As for the confrontational nature of Aries as seen with Haley, I mean, 
we literally see him fist fight Morris if we shut down Jojamar. I think Pierre is the perfect Aries. Our last spring birthday is Emily, whose birthday is spring 27, and she is easily a Pisces. She has the creative spirit, she's got deep empathy, and can feel our energy as soon as we walk into the saloon. She's very artistic with her tailoring, and this one is just a no-brainer. She's very nurturing and caring, as you can see in her four heart event. A parrot flies too low and flies into the window of her house injuring itself. Emily rushes over and takes care of it, and from then on, we see a parrot in her room. We can see her sensitivity causing her to feel overwhelmed when we take her to certain movies. If we take her to see It Howls in the Rain or Mysterium, she'll say, Yoba, please protect me from the dark energy of this movie. She is very affected by the energy and actions of other people, and even the things she consumes, like movies. I think Emily is the quintessential Pisces. Let's go ahead and move on to the next season, Summer. We've got four possible signs, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, and Virgo. I won't repeat the description for Gemini since we went over that in spring, but let me give a brief description for the rest. Cancer is categorized by their nurturing and protective qualities. They are deeply emotional and intuitive with a strong focus on home and family. They are caring and empathetic, often creating a safe and loving environment for those around them. On the downside, their moodiness and tendency to cling to past hurts can make them appear overly sensitive and sometimes difficult to approach. Leos shine with charisma and leadership. They are confident and generous, often enjoying the spotlight and taking on roles of authority. Their creative and warm-hearted nature makes them natural leaders and enthusiastic individuals. However, their desire for attention and tendency toward arrogance can lead to conflicts with others, and their dramatic flair might sometimes overshadow their more thoughtful qualities. Virgos are known for their analytical and detail-oriented approach. They are practical and reliable with a strong focus on efficiency and organization. They are often seen as meticulous and dedicated, striving to improve their surroundings. However, their perfectionism and tendency to be overly critical can lead to issues with self-acceptance and interpersonal relationships. They might also struggle with being overly reserved or detached. So our first summer character is going to be Jazz, and again, she's got many years ahead of her for her personality to grow and develop, but I'm gonna say she's a Cancer. She is very close to Marnie and Shane, as that is the only family she has left since her parents passed away. A hard-to-find dialogue that can only be found if you reach 10 hearts with her and talk to her on Sunday only. Did you know Shane's my godfather? He was a friend of my parents. They died. I don't really want to labor her as her tendency to cling to past hurts can make her appear overly sensitive because that's obviously ridiculous, but she has had a hard life so far and is deeply affected by it, understandably. Our next character is Gus, whose birthday is summer 8, and I think he's our first Leo. Gus seems like a sort of meek character, standing behind the bar most of the time and kind of becoming a background character. But in 1.6, when the green rain happens, a brand new phenomenon that would be extremely terrifying to anyone experiencing it for the first time, it's Gus that sends a letter to us stating, Saw the weather report last night. I'm not sure what will happen, but if anyone wants to take shelter in the saloon, I'll keep it open all day. He sent this letter to everyone in Pelican Town. This is leadership. We can see more Leo traits in Gus during a Linus cutscene. If you have 50 friendship points with Linus, George can ask us to scare off some raccoons he heard digging in the trash, only for it to turn out to be Linus looking for food that's simply going to waste. At the end of the cutscene, it's Gus who offers a basket of zucchini fritters and states that he doesn't want any villager in Pelican Town to go hungry. Maru, whose birthday Day is summer 10 is an easy Virgo. She's analytical and detail-oriented in her personal work and research, and also at her job at Harvey's clinic. Virgos struggle with self-acceptance, and I do think Maru is very accepting of who she is, but I don't think she's that accepting of the role that she plays in her family. If you reach 10 hearts with her, you'll get a cutscene where her project that she's been working on for months, Marilda, has finally come to fruition. She tells Demetrius, her dad, that she's been making this robot in order to take care of Demetrius and Robin when she she's not living with them anymore. The robot turns out to be sentient and wants to live its own life and explore the galaxy. Demetrius states, your mother and I can take care of ourselves. I know you're ready to start a life of your own, and I've come to terms with the thought of not having you around anymore. Of course, Maru's invention is impressive, but this cutscene also shows that Maru kind of took on a role of potential caretaker for her parents, and almost turned into a parent herself by attempting to set her parents up for the future, as a parent would for their children. She accepts that she can live her life now how she wants to, 
further providing evidence that Maru is a Virgo. Next up is Alex, and I think he's a Leo as well. In Concerned Apes devlog number 12, it states, Alex loves sports and hanging out at the beach. He is quite arrogant and brags to everyone that he's going to be a professional athlete. Is his cockiness just a facade to mask his crushing self-doubt? Is he using his sports dream to fill the void left by the disappearance of his parents? Or is he just a brazen youth trying to look cool? It's no secret that Alex can be very confident to the point of arrogance, but is he a natural leader? Maybe not a leader of Pelican Town like we see with Gus, but definitely in his household. Evelyn is too sweet and kind to outright ask, let alone demand that Alex helps them out. And George definitely isn't going to. He's not the type to ever ask for help. Alex takes great care of his grandparents and acknowledges that they need help and steps up to do so. During the Green Rain event, you'll see that Alex isn't at the saloon. He's at home. What's going on out there? Any action? I gotta stay here with my grandparents. Marry Alex and he'll be sure to visit his grandparents too. I'm gonna hang out here all day. My grandparents aren't getting any younger. I had a good day. I like to see my grandparents often. They're getting pretty old. He can also randomly say to us in the fall and winter, I hope my grandparents are doing okay. Grandpa's too cheap to turn on this furnace until the last minute. I hope my grandparents are doing okay. They used to rely on my help quite a bit, you know, with lifting heavy objects or whatever. Alex is a Leo, Nuff said. Next up, we have Sam, whose birthday is summer 17, and I'm gonna put him as a Gemini. If you marry Sam and get him to 14 hearts, he states that he's gotten lazy since moving into the farmhouse, and he wants to find work, something to do with music. He ends up being contacted by a studio that asks him to make music for a kid's TV show, The Happy Junimo Show. By the end of the 14 heart event, he he successfully makes some music and impresses Jazz and Vincent with it. I don't think Sam's Gemini's ways are showing in a his restless nature might cause him to avoid commitment way, but rather his restless personality is going to make him want to try new things. He gets married, moves out of his parents' house, and moves in with his spouse, and immediately starts working on the farm with us, and then decides to pick up another job opportunity, making music. He's adventurous and versatile, and has been able to adapt to all of the challenges thrown at him. Working at Joja Mart, working on the farm, working for a music studio, even if the music for the cartoon wasn't exactly what he wanted, he still adapted and made great music. Next up we have Demetrius whose birthday is summer 19 and I'm afraid my answer for Demetrius is going to be a little boring because him and Maru are so similar. He's also going to be a Virgo, just like her. I'd even say he's more analytical and practical than Maru. And we can definitely see this after finishing the super request, Robin's project. Upon completion, the deluxe Lux red double bed can now be bought, and Demetrius says, Um, Robin, what's the point of the four posts? It seems like an inefficient use of materials. Robin explains that it's an aesthetic choice for the beauty of it, which Demetrius doesn't really understand. This isn't him failing to understand aesthetics, it's more so that the world is very methodical to him, and he's very practical. His overly critical ways definitely affect his interpersonal relationships because if you try to romance Maru, you are constantly met with discouragement. Reach two hearts with Maru and upon entering their house, you'll find Maru and Demetrius testing soil samples. When she leaves, Demetrius Demetrius tells you that Maru is a good kid and his special little girl, and he wouldn't want anything getting in the way of her bright future. It's like he's criticizing us by assuming that we're going to distract her from her future. Definitely Virgo vibes. Next up, we have the dwarf, whose birthday is summer 22, who I also think is a Virgo. Their entire livelihood is pretty much built on the fact that they see the world in a very practical way. There's something profitable that I can sell, so I'll go ahead and take it. I got all this stuff from the surface. I just take it from your people during the night. Hmm? What is this concept you call private property? The dwarf is overly critical of pretty much everyone, which makes them very guarded and untrusting of others. You're not a spy sent by the shadow people, are you? I'm keeping my eye on you. After earning 50 friendship points with the dwarf, we can find the dwarf in the sewers with Krobus, where they're arguing. The dwarf blames the shadow people for the death of their family, and a fight breaks out, just to be stopped by the wizard. Willie's birthday falls on summer 24, and I think this fisherman is a Gemini, curious about the world around him and very adaptable to any situation that's thrown at him. During the night market, he can say, I can't get me a good night's sleep with that night market going on. Eh but that's okay. I'm flexible. And after the green rain, he quickly recovers from the shocking turn of events. Well, the fish seem as healthy as ever. In fact, I swear they've been biting with extra vigor. If the fish like these rains, then I like them too. Willie's moods go with the tide, and if the tide is happy, then so is he. Our last summer birthday is Leo, whose birthday is summer 26. 
and we learn so much about him after he moves to Pelican Town. He is definitely a cancer. Being raised by the parrots of the jungle, he's had to basically create his own definition of family. And once he moves to Pelican Town, he becomes very close to Penny, Linus, Vincent, and Jazz. I'm sure Jazz and Vincent thought I was weird at first. I accidentally squawked at the school table a few times. That didn't help. It was a big change for everyone. But we're good friends now. Uncle Linus says I should cook my fish before eating it. I'm having a hard time getting used to it. So dry. Cancers can get moody sometimes, and of course, Leo has plenty of reasons to get sad sometimes because of his past. We can get random dialogues on Ginger Island. I'm sad today. You go on, have fun. Let me be sad. Sorry. I'm shy today. He just has off days, and that's perfectly okay. Speaking of Penny, she's our first fall birthday, fall two specifically. For the fall season, we have four signs as possibilities. Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. I won't repeat what traits Virgos have, but Libras are associated with balance and harmony. They are diplomatic and charming, with a keen sense of fairness, and a desire to create harmonious relationships. They value beauty and partnership, often striving to maintain equilibrium in their lives. Nonetheless, their indecisiveness and tendency to people please can lead to challenges with making choices and asserting their own needs. Scorpios embody intensity and passion. They are known for their deep emotional insights and resourcefulness, often tackling challenges with determination and resilience. Their transformative approach can lead to significant personal growth. However, their secretive nature and tendency toward obsession or vengeance can create trust issues and strained relationships. Sagittariuses are categorized by their adventurous and optimistic spirit. Sagittariuses are enthusiastic and freedom loving with a passion for exploration and new experiences. Their philosophical outlook and honesty often inspire those around them. However, their impulsiveness and tactlessness can lead to misunderstandings and difficulties with commitment as they may struggle with staying grounded. I think Penny is a prime example of a Libra. In her personal life, there is a fight for what's fair at home. She often has to clean way more than Pam and a lot of the responsibilities fall on her plate. Dishes, dishes, dishes. Ugh. If my mother wasn't always nursing a headache from her late nights at the saloon, maybe she could help around the house a little. I've been having to keep our place clean, but it always gets so messy again. It's hard to run a household all by yourself. Reach eight hearts with her and she'll state, I'm eager to move out. It's such a burden to be worrying about mom all the time. I want her to be happy, but I can't stay here forever, you know? She is constantly striving for more balance and harmony in her life and unfortunately has to overcome making Pam happy and keeping the peace in the household so that Penny can actually have a chance to live her life and chase her own dreams. Next up is Elliot, whose birthday is fall five and I think he's a Sagittarius. I almost wanted to say he's a Scorpio because of his vibrancy, his passion and intensity, but went with Sagittarius because the flaws that are typical of a Sagittarius line up with him more. He can be tactless, and some people find it charming and a little dorky and endearing, but other people find it really off-putting and annoying. During the green rain, he can say, let's not get in a tizzy now. Gus, I propose a round of drinks to settle the nerves. I honestly think it's dorky in an endearing way, but I can see people saying that this is a flaw of his. Besides this, we know that he's very adventurous, seeing as how he packed up all of his belongings to move to Pelican Town and live on the beach to pursue his dream of being a writer. He's very open to trying new experiences, even if it at least gives him something to write about. At A Hearts, he'll say, I wouldn't mind trying my hand at farming. The quiet atmosphere of a farm might be a good source of literary inspiration, don't you think? Jody, whose birthday is fall 11, is interesting. I take a deep dive into her personality in another video, Jody's Dark Secret, in which I go into details about how she's really unsatisfied with her life. I think she's a Libra, but honestly, I think if the heavy weight of motherhood was lifted off of her shoulders, she'd feel more like a Sagittarius, but that's a separate reality. The workload in her life is unbalanced and she craves for more harmony. She puts Vincent and Sam first and wants them to have the most carefree childhood ever, but that's at the expense of her taking care of all of the chores herself. She doesn't assert her own needs and instead chooses to keep Vincent and Sam as happy as they can be at the expense of her happiness. I had a dream that I had complete freedom, no obligation to anyone but myself. Then I woke up and realized I had a full day of house chores ahead of me. Maybe I've spoiled the boys a bit. They've never had to do any chores. 
I guess I want them to be able to enjoy their childhood while they still can. Abigail, Fall 13, is going to be our first Scorpio. She is deeply passionate about wanting to live her own life the way she wants to, and is very protective of her path. She's very determined and resilient, but there's trust issues and strained relationships with both her mom and her dad. Concerned Apes Devlog number 12 states, Abigail lives at home at the general store with her parents. She sometimes fights with her mom, who worries about Abigail's alternative lifestyle. Her mom has the following to say, I wish Abby would dress more appropriately and stop dyeing her hair. She has such a wonderful natural hair color, just like her grandmother did. Oh, and I wish she'd find some wholesome interests instead of this occult nonsense she's into. You might find Abigail alone in the graveyard or maybe out in a rainstorm looking for frogs. Abigail is used to sneaking off and doing whatever she wants. As we can see in her six heart event where she's hanging out in the graveyard practicing with her sword. Marry Abigail and she can say, I always loved this place long before you moved in. Now I can explore the farm whenever I want. Hey, I'm just debating what I should do today. I'm not used to having this much freedom. She immediately feels that burst of energy and freedom that she always wanted. But what about the Scorpio's classic need for vengeance? If you marry Abigail and get her hearts low enough, she can say, I wonder if I could have done better. I was very good friends with Sebastian before we met. He was probably the one. That's pretty crazy to say. No other spouse in the game can say anything like this to you, by the way, not even Sebastian. She's the only one who will say, hmm, maybe I should have married someone else, which isn't a bad thing because let's face facts, you shouldn't have gotten her hearts that low to begin with. You have to go out of your way to piss off your spouse in Stardew Valley, by the way. But I do think this is further evidence that Abigail is in fact a Scorpio. We don't know much about Sandy, but I do think she's a Virgo because of how practical she is. Reach for hearts with her and she'll say, Hey, I think I can trust you. You can keep a secret, right? That guy in the back? It's some kind of exclusive club. I've never been inside myself, but they pay me a generous monthly rent, so I don't ask any questions. So, how's that Stardew Valley weather right now? Reach 10 hearts and she'll say to you, Hey, it's the farmer. I'm glad to see you, kid. I was starting to think you'd never come back. If I didn't have this shop to run, I'd come back to the valley with you for a day or two. Just you and me on the old farm. You'll just have to visit me more often so I don't get depressed. She's very logical and direct, so I think she's a Virgo. But honestly, if y'all think she's a Libra, Scorpio, or Sagittarius, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts. Marnie feels like a Libra to me because of her wanting to keep balance in the household, especially with Shane's addiction struggles and wanting to create a safe space for Jazz. Her people-pleasing ways are really seen with Mayor Lewis. I touched on this a little bit when I was talking about Lewis, so I'll keep it brief, but her having to beg Lewis to make their relationship public and jumping through all these little hoops to make him happy is just screaming people pleaser Libra to me. Robin feels like a Sagittarius to me. She's very optimistic and we know she's adventurous just from her job because she can say to us, my parents were bewildered when I told them that I wanted to be a carpenter. They were pretty old fashioned. So although she's not heading into the mines like we are, she has an adventurous spirit and she's always trying new things with her carpentry. I don't really want to call her tactless like a Sagittarius can be, but she can be a little blunt as we can see in the intro where Lewis says, so you're moving into your grandfather's old cottage. It's a good house, very rustic. Robin then says, rustic that's one way to put it yeesh this was obviously just a little joke from her since she's a carpenter so she can see how the cottage has fallen apart and the woodwork needs to be upgraded desperately but i can understand why some people would say this was a tactless moment from her especially since our grandfather just died her enthusiasm and optimism definitely outweighs this momentary lapse intact though our last fall birthday is george and he's definitely a virgo when we learn more about george we find out that he actually used to work in the mines and that's why he's in a wheelchair. So we can see that he was very dedicated to working hard and providing for his family, Evelyn and his daughter Clara. We can see that he's overly critical of like everything. It's awful cold, isn't it? What a rotten day. I'm not much of a talker, especially not to strangers, if you don't mind me saying. Hmm, looks like another gloomy day. His most critical moment comes if you marry Alex and your farmer is male. How can two men get married? It's unnatural. Hmm, I guess I'm just old fashioned. Yeesh. There is some growth though. Reach 10 hearts with George and he'll say, I'll admit, I thought it was strange for two men to be together, but you're such a nice young man and I know you two are in love. 
I've changed my mind. So at least we can say a positive thing or two about him. Last but not least, we've got our winter birthdays, starting strong with Krobus. I've been pleasantly surprised at the amount of Krobus fans we have in the community, so I've been working on some ideas for Krobus videos. If y'all have any specific suggestions, feel free to leave a comment. For winter, we have four possible signs, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. I won't go over Sagittarius and Pisces again, but Capricorns are often characterized by their practicality, discipline, and ambition. They are typically seen as hardworking and goal-oriented, with a strong sense of responsibility. They value structure and organization, and they approach challenges with a determined and strategic mindset. Their reserved nature may come off as aloof, but they are often deeply loyal and dependable friends and colleagues. Aquariuses are known for their innovative and independent nature. They are often seen as forward thinkers and visionaries, valuing originality and humanitarian efforts. They possess a strong sense of social justice and are driven to make a positive impact on the world. However, their detachment and unpredictability can sometimes make them seem aloof or impractical. They may struggle with emotional expression and maintaining personal connections. I think Krobus is going to be an Aquarius. Krobus is going to be kind of a curveball for us because we're looking at his very non-human traits and trying to apply them to what we deem as positive and negative. But we can definitely say that he's innovative and quite the visionary. He's the only shadow person that entertained the idea of even talking to humans, let alone conducting business with them. Krobus can even move in with you as a roommate. We're so physically different that it's a challenge to live together, isn't it? I hope the humidity here isn't bothersome to you. We both have to compromise in order to live together. He's decided to do his best to live with a human and adapt to this brand new situation. He also has high hopes for social justice, saying to us, Sometimes I wonder if humans and shadow people could really ever coexist. It's a lovely idea, but is it realistic? I hope so. Reach high enough hearts as a roommate and he'll say, we're making progress and I feel really hopeful. Linus's birthday falls on winter three and he's definitely a Capricorn. His practicality is seen with his bare bones way of living and only keeping necessities in his life. We know he's really disciplined because he's able to withstand the coldness of the winter. We can definitely see his reserved nature with a few lines of dialogue. I don't know you well enough to trust you. Sorry. I have to be wary of strangers. Most people don't like a wild man. I'm happy by myself, you know. I don't need new friends. I have everything I need to survive, and more. Nature plays a wonderful tune if you can only learn to listen. I also spend a lot of time reading. One of the reasons I stopped in the valley was for the great library. Caroline's birthday falls on winter seven and she's honestly been the most difficult character for me to place. She's very traditional as we can see with her endless dialogues about her distaste for Abigail's fashion, hobbies, hair, interests, overall personality, yeesh. So I can't place her as a Sagittarius who values adventure and freedom of expression or a Pisces who values creative spirit and is deeply compassionate and intuitive to others' feelings. I guess I'll put her as a Capricorn because she is goal-oriented, but I'll be honest with y'all, I'm not confident with this one. Marry Abigail and she can say, Abby was taking online classes here, but I don't think her heart was really in it. She's a free spirit like I was before I met Pierre. She's probably having the time of her life on your farm. I think after she married Pierre and they started a family, a more disciplined and reserved side of her came out. She is determined to do her best to take care of her family in her own way, but it seriously feels like I'm grasping grasping at straws here, so I'm just gonna pretend that this entire paragraph has him in a weird blunder and move on to Sebastian, a fan favorite, here to save the day. His birthday is winter 10, and he is definitely an Aquarius. Very independent, forward-thinking, and unfortunately, people think he's aloof because of his difficulties expressing his emotions. Having a good weekend? Nice. If I just disappeared, would it really matter? Marry Sebastian, and his independent side continues to flourish. You don't ever have to worry about me. I like to spend a lot of time alone. I don't really need friends. You're the only person I need in my life. Is that weird? I guess I'm not like most people. I'm gonna take a walk today. I need some time to myself. I'll see you in the evening. Aquariuses aren't very good at maintaining personal connections, which is difficult to notice with Sebastian since he's so independent and introverted. But while I was doing research for this video, I found this dialogue that Sebastian can say to us. I wonder what Sam's up to. We used to be really good friends. He can say this in the winter. This seems really odd to me. We used to be really good friends? Is it possible that after Sebastian gets married, he doesn't make his way to town as often as Sam would like? Maybe? And maybe they start growing distant from one another? I'm honestly unsure, and I'm gonna have to do a theory video on this for sure. But for now, Sebastian is an Aquarius. 
Harvey is next, whose birthday falls on Winter 14, and our beloved doctor is the quintessential Capricorn. You can't be a doctor and not have ambitions and discipline. I feel like this one is pretty cut and dry. Harvey is extremely hardworking. It's a lot of work being a doctor. I don't eat as well as I should. If I didn't live alone, I think it would be easier. His reserved nature is seen in the fact that for a great long while, the only dialogues we get from Harvey has to do with our health. It takes a while for him to start actually talking to us in a non-doctor patient way, but there's no doubt that he does make a deep connection with us, if we allow it. The wizard's birthday falls on winter 17, and I'm throwing a curveball at y'all. Did y'all know there's actually a secret astrology sign? Aphiuchus has been suggested as a possible 13th astrological sign when the Babylonians invented the constellations 3,000 years ago. They chose to leave out the 13th sign. The zodiac signs are a collection of 12 constellations that form a ring in the sky and mark out the path the sun will take through the sky over the course of the year. There's actually 13 constellations along the path, but the number 12 fitted into a bunch of their mystical beliefs better, so early astronomers ignored one of the constellations. So, what is a typical Ophiuchus like? Ophiuchus represents unity. Its people were spirited, magnetic, impulsive, clever, flamboyant, and at times jealous, power hungry, and temperamental. It is comical how perfect this sounds for the wizard. It almost sounds like I'm just making all of this up conveniently for the wizard, but I promise, have a Google and you'll see that this is all real. It is very obvious that the wizard is spiritual and magical. And as we saw in the Dwarf Krobus cutscene, he is interested in keeping the peace between the different species. And we see in the beginning of the game that he's interested in connecting us with the Junimos, forest spirits. The wizard owns this sign, for sure. I think Evelyn is going to be a Pisces because you need a deep level of empathy to deal with George's crankiness, and I get it, he's had a very long and difficult life. Her understanding of others is immaculate, and we can see with how she is with George, Alex, and the flower beds that she's in charge of all over the town, she is very nurturing and caring. Leah's birthday is winter 23, and she's definitely an Aquarius. She moves to Pelican Town and gets a cabin in the woods all by herself. She's very independent, and her innovation is seen with her artwork all the time. Some people might think she's aloof or she's not expressive just because she struggles a little with expressing it, but if you keep getting close with her, you'll see that she's a passionate artist. She also has a very strong drive to make a positive impact on the world, and she's very passionate about social justice. I hate to be blunt, but if we don't treat nature with respect, our grandchildren will be doomed. Don't you think so? Everyone has a unique and interesting perspective, whether they believe it or not. Don't you think so? Although some people have opinions that I just can't respect. This morning, I accidentally stepped on a bug. Sometimes I think it's impossible to live without destroying nature in some way. We wouldn't be able to survive without nature. It's good to remember that. Our last winter birthday is Clint, and I think he's a Capricorn. I know he doesn't exactly enjoy his job as a blacksmith, but despite this, he does work incredibly hard. It's nicer to work outdoors than buy a hot furnace all day. I'm only a blacksmith because my father pushed me into it. Clint can also be one of the characters that can find us passed out in the mines. I found you unconscious in the mines. I think I blew my back out dragging you all the way up here. Here. Be a little more careful next time, okay? Despite the difficult work he finds on his plate, he is still very disciplined and hardworking and makes sure to accomplish his goals. Our final character is me. I'm curious to know what sign y'all think I am. Let me know down in the comments. With that said, I hope y'all enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. This was a huge video. I'd love to know if y'all liked the length of this video. Be sure to let me know. I stream Pixel Art and Stardew Valley on Twitch, so if you'd like to check that out, link in description. And if you've got a suggestion for the next video or some headcanons that y'all have and want to share, be sure to leave a comment down below and make sure to subscribe to catch my next video. I'll be making more Stardew Valley videos, so keep an eye out. See y'all next time. Bye!